he's a complete asshole and might be an, a uniquely um, kind of special asshole in my opinion because hypocrites to me are the worst. I was just thinking before I turned record on what is he, what's like the saying? It's like, uh, there's something, be the change you wish to see in the world, lazy fuck. Why don't you change things? Well, I'll get to that in a second. I would be the change you wish to see in the world. My life is my message. If I'm not mistaken, that's his other one. My life is my message. Why Gandhi's an asshole, in my opinion, is because his wife got very ill with what I understand to be something tantamount to like the flu or um, a virus, the antibiotics that were available at the time and offered to her emphatically by several doctors. Um, he made the decision for her body, his wife, um, that she didn't need the these new Western uh, drugs and that God was going to heal her, meditation was going to heal her, uh, whatever. Um, who the hell knows? Uh, he was going to heal her. You know, that's probably at the end. If he was like rolling the dice, if he was going to, if she, if she would have made it. So every night I did this and this and this and this. I can teach now. Um, guess what happened when the motherfucker got sick with the same thing? He didn't take the medicine and he healed himself. No, he took the fucking medicine. Like the first hour, like flown from wherever the fuck in like whatever time period we're talking about. That's just so fucking, and cool. See, the thing about humans and about life experiences is it we constantly get chances to write it, to make a lesson out of it. So imagine that goes down and he feels bad, like, I should have given these medicine, this medicine to my wife, obviously. Um, I got it. <sighs> Thankfully, I took it. The first thing I would do from Gandhi is get on all the radio stations that only listen to me and the TV stations that only pay attention to what I say. Hey, I fucked up big time, guys. And if any of you guys get sick, we're going to make this available. I just had this funny thought, like, India is a really big country with a lot of people. Um, but probably there weren't as many back then. A lot of people don't know that. And the fact that he he's not open about it or he didn't himself get in... I'm not saying get in front of is like a political... Um, it feels like I'm going to go... Like, I got to go get in front of that. Like, they know you know something, so they call you and they're like, hey, I got to tell you this thing. Would you have done that if you didn't know I was about to find out or already knew? Like, that's what matters to me. And also, like, the ethical, especially specifically, specifically, because he's in this place of influence where subjects like this specifically, like, you know, do we do Western medicine? Does that, you know, that's, that's what he was, I feel... Thing, topics like this, philosophy, humanity, um, flexibility in navigating moral compasses in certain situations. His wife was a good woman. She wasn't like, you know, they had a good relationship. She died because of him. She wanted to take the drugs. He got sick and took them and kept on with his fucking spiritual work. Like, how come he didn't say, I made this human mistake? You know, everyone's like wanting to know if like an enlightened man's penis really glows. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to know that. But it's like fucked up when you're in that position. Um, and he's racist, I heard. But that source is a lot less credible than the other one. My um, meditation teacher from India, my old meditation teacher told me that story. And he almost had like a version that it was okay. Yeah, you go to, that yeah, was good. Everyone from India does that. If you're from India, I don't care. You talk like that or someone you know does. Uh, did, um, he didn't take it. 
uh, he told his wife not to take it. But then uh, when it's time for him to take it, he thought, oh, she died, so I take it. Uh, wait, no. By the way, that's like a technique to make people agree with you, is to nod. My brother's in finance and he says that, you know, like in England, like not just like he works at a bank, like he does like, his last uh, title is Global Financial Debt Originator, like Barclays Bank, like like he's like working on the, the debt of our globe. That was like the last business card I had, which was like eight years ago. But he's like, actually, well, I'll be there, like people from all over the world and in some kind of meeting about the globe's debt. And, uh, you know, uh, English is the language of business. So they're like, <laughs> he said all the Indian businessmen are like this. Um, hypocrites are a special kind of asshole. Like, I don't think you can be a hypocrite and not be an asshole. Um, I just thought of this story that was so, it was like, to me, it's like, Argh! There's a lot of hypocrisy going on right now. I know that people are frustrated. Today is 23rd of May and my spectrum internet bill is due. I'm not gonna worry cause that shit will be paid. I'm not gonna worry that shit will be paid. I keep burning my hand on the incense that I have stuck in a book and falling on a specific piece of plastic for easy cleanup. So I went to rehab like 11 years ago, little known fact, just kidding. My sister like went on fucking Howard Stern. Anyway, that's a different story. So I went to this little place called The Hills for a drug rehabilitation, which turned into be a long-term like forced babysitting. And I met with like five or six, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I've spoken to two of the techs directly the technicians that work there, they were like, Ashley, we had a meeting every, nobody, we all knew that you were fine. We had a meeting every single week um, about a story to, for the week for you. Like, I'm sorry, you guys were having like a, a writer's meeting about how the show was gonna go down. I remember it was too fucked up. On the sixth month, I was just going for like an evaluation and we sit down and like my case manager, the one that's psycho, bitches I'll do something on her um she's like looking at me all weird she's like you can wait outside and like the whole week we'd been talking like my sister was gonna come as like me begging to get out of this freaking place and get an apartment right which looking back it's like wow it's like I feel like what happened to me on a small scale is like what everyone is going through <laughs> big scale like I was like begging for my freedom I loved everything <sighs> Shit. Um, so she's like a bit like standoffish. I'm like, okay. You know, all week we were like, you know, da da da. She was all in on me getting this new place. I found a place, found a place. Um, my sister comes in with like a weird face too. Oh, fuck. These two bitches with weird faces. This is not gonna go well. Ashley, your weekly drug panel test came back positive for opiates oh fuck that fuck you opiate what is opiate again i don't even know what an opiate is i was pretty strictly like you know like when my mom had a stroke and at the end i was like drinking too much or something you know like i was specific when i was living in uh miami i did blow a little like it's not weed is not a drug even when i was and I took that shit seriously once I committed. That's, I'm not, I can't be a fake person. Um, I was like six or seven months seriously sober. I'd been through the steps. I had a sponsee. Like I probably was a secretary and had commitments at seven meetings a week. I didn't, opium, which one is that? What, what family is that? How the fuck would that get in my, like there is a margin of error for these tests no matter what. But I was like, and Whitney's like, no, it was like alcohol and opium. So I would have risked fucking drinking, no. And they'd already told me I'm not an alcoholic. I'm like just too much into my eating thing. So they started to charge for me going to eating disorders once meetings once a week. It was such a fuck show. By the way, they weren't certified 
for drug rehabilitation or eating disorder rehabilitation. This was just like a fucking standing building, like with rogue, like not even rogue, with like real assholes who destroy people's lives and families. And it's really on a serious level fucked up. Um, real talk. So before I committed, committed um, to staying there, I mean, to being sober and doing this whole thing, which wasn't like a whole, uh, it was a choice, it was a surrender more than a commitment. <laughs> but a commi I, I committed to that surrender and a spiritual experience came to me. But this was after I tried AWOLing. This was after I ordered like 150 Xanax to the unit and got it through. This bitch Meredith Feinberg who still had, who stole my studio, stole my computer, stole my bike in my studio, was in my emails in my computer and saw that I ordered it. Like you couldn't go any lower in the gene pool as you are. And you call the rehab, hey, snooping through Ashley's email, got her out of her business. She's in uh, fucking California living in, with another girl in a room, begging for her computer and phone every night. <laughs> Guess what? I'm also in that cunt's email. And she ordered 150 Xanax from a Canada pharmacy to be delivered there. Have a good day. I've done my good Samaritan deed for the day. Not to mention, I didn't mention this at the intervention that I organized with her sister. Um, I brought blow to her house the week before all that and was licking her vagina and boobs. Yeah, that happened. Oh, okay, I forgot I hung up the phone. So weird when that happens. I tell people things and then I hang up. No, that happened. That girl that organized the whole intervention with my sister was absolutely an alcoholic. I remember her calling me one time like, wasted and like going to pick up her kids that wasn't cool crying about a police officer who almost called the cops on him she was like dating him for a little while and she was like going to his the girl's nuts um she uh went into my email told them so i remember like so i was like okay if i'm gonna be in this fucking place for 30 60 days end up being like a year if i'm gonna be in this joint i'll get some Xanax. Kick it, it'll be fine. I order them and I'm like a I'm like a responsible good person. I'm like, alright, I'll read some fucking books, I'll get these I mean, it's, you know, like the the groups are kind of interesting, except for the passive aggressive yoga teacher. <laughs> Not me. They had like a yoga class and like this woman well she was dating the fucking I don't know. Everyone's so fucked. These are like people's lives, you know? Like but karma is obedient. That's why, you know, you just do the best thing, you know, for everyone, but for yourself, but not at the expense of other people. Anyway, Brucey calls me into, it was like lunchtime, and there was a group by the owner, uh, Howard Samuels, called The Beast. Narcissist. Um, the beast was about the Jodo Lobo. He just walked around talking about, like, you know, like swinging his dick around. Like, he had sex with a bunch of people in the, um, and I know two girls that slept with him. Talk about drugs to the gene pool. Who's sleeping with an addict in the, like, coming to you for fucking sobriety and you're charging them 45 grand a month? Or their parents, or their insurance. And uh, I'll never forget. So these, like the alumni used to come for this one. And he's like talking about himself and his house and da, da, da. Like who the fuck knows what he's talking about? The day that I nodded off was like half because of the Xanax and maybe half because he was like, people like that just, they make me nauseous. And I was like, okay, well, if I can't throw up, I'll just sleep. <laughs> so he's like, my house and my wife and blah, 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 or whatever the fuck's coming out of his mouth. Ashley? I think I dropped my coffee, legit. Cause I remember I had to, to clean that up. Do you have 
like it was so specific like do you have 150 do you have like xan did you order xanax online in front of like the whole rehab and i was like Oof. well it doesn't matter what you say right now because this woman named hope and this other woman who i'm not gonna say her name because she's one of the people that told me about all this like like it was all organized it was like it was all plotted out, you know? Um, chips are their jokes on Ash. But um, these two were like, how dare they go down to my room? Of course, Bruce had called me before and he's like, Do you, did you order drugs to the, to the whatever the fuck they call that place? To the fucking steal your soul and your family's anything that they have or whatever. I don't know, it's a blessing now, you know? But, um, it's all like my Arabic stuff. <laughs> I was like thinking the first thing thought I had to my in my head was there's a cloud on top of this fucking it's actually um it's an old uh rock stars Rock Hudson's old property, a compound on Mulholland and Little Kenny. I was thinking, there's a fucking cloud and they're watching everything. Which is so weird, because I was like an advanced thought. That's probably what they have going on now. And I said, like, I remember what my aunt used to say to me, lie, 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 and deny. I was like, no. What are you, what are you talking about? I mean, it was like, the kind of thing, because I'm a shit liar. It was the kind of thing where I was like, I can't say yes, because fuck. So obviously, no. I went back to my room before the beast, you know? I put like 30 pills in one pocket, 30 pills like under a sole of a shoe, 20 pills in like the back of a suitcase. And so Hope goes like storming down there and she's this recovered crackhead and she's a little tall and a little big, but and the other woman, and I'm like, okay, they're definitely gonna find one of them. Everyone else is like upstairs in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Suspense. And sure enough, she comes marching up, all proud of like the 10 pack or the 10, 20 pills that are in one Ziploc. And like, everyone looks at me. First of all, fuck everyone else in there that didn't admit later, like I was just jealous I didn't have it or whatever, you know? Like, <sighs> we're trying to like stay sober. Like, you would do this. I was just like, oh man. Um, those women, not even four months later, test the women that worked there and made that whole deal. This is a safe place for everyone and blah, blah, blah. Positive for crystal meth within four months, which means they were doing it then when she was yelling at me, being like Mama Teresa or whatever, as well as raiding the illegal med shack that they had there. It was not like, nothing was, I mean, my friend that was talking, she's like, I didn't have like a, I, have, I didn't even have like a, um, not a prescription license. What are those people called? Pharmacist thing. <laughs> it was called the med shack, not as a nickname. It was literally a med shack. Life goes on. Life goes on.